The Saw series is maybe one of the most divisive film franchises out there. With a lot of different angles to come at it from, the series has been left with a lot of discordant reputations. Many think that the series highly, highly devolved into B-grade movie status from film to film, while many think that the entire franchise is just horrible from the very start and not worth a glance at. And many, many love all of them and couldn't say a bad thing about them. And I, for myself, I guess lean more heavily into that last one, and I would call myself a fan. In fact, I'd call myself quite a big fan. A super fan, if you will. I'm like an argumentative investor where I spend my time watching these films with the rewards of mind fuckery. <laughs> and I have enjoyed that time while re-watching this series quite a few times. And I love it. I've wasted a lot of time with this. <laughs> no, invested. And so yeah, I think that a lot of these movies can be pretty good. I know that some of them get a bit dumb. I know they get a bit schlocky. I know. I'm aware that they're a bit dumb in some ways, but I really think you can look past that stuff and see the greatness within. Look, say what you want about Saw, they're too violent. The twists become increasingly ridiculous and unbelievable from film to film, and or it makes no sense come the later films. But you know what? Personally, I think that Saw films are painfully underrated. Painfully. Because the people in the movies are tortured. Do you get it? It's it's pun humor. Don't worry, all the good YouTubers do it. But yeah, like I was alluding to, don't get me wrong, they're not without their shortcomings and weaknesses. Like Jigsaw's crazy, just wild morals that contradict themselves from film to film, and the character of Hoffman, who later becomes a villain, Jigsaw's apprentice in the later films. He is so ridiculously evil that he borderlines on being a cartoon. Plus, all of the films I know get more and more convoluted as they go. I think they want to try and make things as complex as possible, just so they can mind fuck you at the end. And like, I get it. It gets a bit silly, it gets a bit too over the top in all the different things that are going on and I'll also say that the franchise does lose a little bit of its soul by the end of it, by the last few films. You know, there's so many ideas going around that it has kind of lost its identity, especially by Saw 7 which I would say is easily the worst of the lot. And on top of all that, the series goes from being a very small independent film about two people trapped in a room to trying to be as epic and bloody and crazy as possible, all while reaching that cash cow status. We all know it, they pump these movies out like a motherfucker. Every ascending year since the first film's release, the series started to form a pattern, making the production on the cheap and quickly and scoring big in the box office. That was their formula. And because of that hurry to release the next installments, I think that's where the franchise's identity Entity definitely got a little bit lost and fell to the proverbial wayside. That being said, the series never ever failed in the box office department, with the exception of number six, which only made 69 million. 69, nice, that's what people say about that number, you know? Ah, ha, ha, I'm so funny. But every other movie in this franchise made at least $100 million, peaking at number three, which made $163 million. And you gotta consider the fact that the average budget of each of these films was only about 10 million so yeah for these movies that only spent about that much money and then ended up making hundreds of millions of dollars it's staggering and coming down to it the total budget for each film added up barring the new spiral comes down to 122 million dollars that's for every single film but the amount that the films made up overall together is almost 10 times that at 982 million it's seriously crazy that's just you don't hear about that i mean you do Lots of other movies make lots of money. But this is particularly interesting, okay? <laughs> Saw to date is the fifth highest grossing horror franchise domestically in the US. Just after Friday the 13th, Elm Street, surprisingly the Hannibal films, which makes it at third, then Halloween, and then fifth is Saw. And then followed by that is Scream and Chainsaw Massacre. Despite all that though, even though you can see clear dips in the quality throughout the films, and opposed to all of the, the masses of haters and everybody that just says shit about this, and ignoring the rotten tomato scores like seriously just by the way rotten tomatoes there isn't a single freshly rated saw film on that website they're all under 50 with the max being the first saw which sits straight at 50 but everything else is below that uh which i think is kind of ridiculous it does have an audience score of 84 percent though which is saying a lot but it's also saying nothing as well. Because I never get too wrapped up in the audience score because the audience can be literally anybody. They could be rating these movies on whatever fucking criteria they want. They could be like, oh yeah, I'm gonna rate this Saw movie highly because of the pretty colors. Ah! 
all right look it's probably not that <laughs> but still but if we're looking at the rest of them most of the films average their critic scores in the 30s on rotten tomatoes but it drops down to the worst at seven or saw 3d as it was called upon release with only a fucking 10 percent and look i i said it myself saw seven i do think is by far probably the worst one but I think it deserves more than 10%. A hell of a lot more, to be honest. I would pretty much say that they all deserve to be fresh, if you ask me. But a lot of people would think I'm crazy for saying that. This, if you ask me, is a perfect example of the horror bias in film criticism. I just don't think critics like horror generally a lot of the time. Horror is kind of looked down upon. It's kind of looked at as a genre to not take too seriously it's just for schlocky idiots who enjoy blood and whatever and don't appreciate cinema and you see this a lot with the exception of maybe like the a24 type of films and the elevated horror as they call it things like the lighthouse and midsummer and hereditary some of which i love some of which i don't everybody praises the hell out of those films and i get it a lot of the time they do deserve it but i just i don't think that saw uh and films like it i don't think that they're nearly quite as bad as a lot of critics make them out to be. I think all the screams, for example, they're all good, but if you ask the critics, they get worse from film to film. And look, th there is legitimacy to that, and everybody can have their own opinion, but I just do think generally, when you look at the horror genre, they're typically gonna be rated lower than any typical drama or something like that. A biopic will probably be rated higher than a, than a horror if you're looking at averages. What I'm basically saying is that simple slashes and horror comedies and fuck, even, I hate to say it, but found footage horror movies, they all have their own bona fide classics within their subgenres and I think that they deserve a little bit more of a positive reputation as well as those elevated horror films. On the contrary, if we look at the IMDb scores, they look fairly similar. The first has a 7.6 though, which is quite generous, at least in terms of the mindset of the horror genre being something to look down upon anyway. Uh, but then the next is 6.6 .6 with Saw 2, and then Saw 3 is 6.2, the next is a straight 6, and then 5.8. They all start pretty much dropping at pretty much the exact same rate. So look, you can ask the two biggest uh, film critic websites and everything on the internet you can ask other actual professional critics and you can you can look at all that kind of stuff with these educated people saying what they think and calling these movies shit or you can listen to little old me and be like hey so it's pretty good <laughs> <laughs> but clearly, I was far from the only one that found some enjoyment here. With the film's major success, the fans clamoured each and every year upon release. It was something of a tradition. Every Halloween, Saw would hit cinemas and rival whatever else was coming out at the time. Paranormal Activity being a rival in 2007 and 2010, for example. The point is, Saw was a win-win for the filmmakers as well as for the audiences who wanted to see it. Say what you want about the quality from film to film, Saw never became something ultimately lazy. Maybe some of it lost its way and maybe the Saw series began to focus on traps a little too heavily as the series went on. But for the most part, I would still argue that Saw was something that stayed pretty consistent for the most part. They were cheap, made creatively and just kept coming out and I for one am glad they did. So as I've said, there were some wildly different opinions when it comes to this series, but what you might not know is that it was there from the start. Not only was Saw a divisive title once five or six subsequent sequels were out, and with them wildly escalated amounts of gore, but even in 2004, upon the first film's release, certain critics called the first entry in this series derivative, eerily similar to Seven, a film released a decade prior, while others called it effectively claustrophobic and praised the film for its surprisingly evocative kill scenes, considering its low budget. Others praised the film for being a refreshingly dark take in the genre, which had at the time proven itself to be scared to commit to a serious tone, but instead opted for a tongue-in-cheek approach following the success of the Scream franchise during the years leading up to Saw. Others called Saw nihilistic and mean-spirited according to the Rotten Tomatoes film consensus based on the reviews altogether. Basically, opinions were mixed. Richard J. Leskovsky of the News Gazette said Saw wants to be taken as an 
another seven, though it features perverse gross out scenes, which makes it lack finesse compared to the David Fincher film. Roger Ebert gave the film two out of four stars. He complained of plot contrivances and the usual, but went on to describe it as well made and acted, and it does what it does about as well as it could be expected to. And with that last part, I do find it cool that some of the critics actually did give the film credit that I think it deserved. But that last remark there, you know, being <laughs> that uh, you know, it's only as good as it could have been, it sounds a little bit condescending to the genre as a whole, you know, and that's kind of the critic approach when it comes to horror. That's just kind of the thing. And this is why I think that there is a heavy bias against horror films in film criticism. It's never expected to be great. There's always like, okay, maybe this will be good for a horror film. But even still, look, there's no denying that the Saw franchise was influential as fuck when it came to film, solely due to its brutal reputation. But I do think that thanks to the fans, it continued to grow. And I, I don't think it would have if everybody only listened to the critics. There was a strong sense of community in the fan base for Saw, and you can see that online through like the 10 year old threads and stuff going through fan theories and everything. This series somehow made its name really, really um, recognizable, I suppose. Everybody kind of knew what Saw was throughout the 2000s. It was kind of our generation's version of like Friday the 13th or whatever. Like it was a big deal. And yeah, I guess people were really drawn to this strong identity of what this film was for being very brutal. But that being said, again, with the first one, I don't really think it's as brutal as everybody says, um, or at least said in 2004. The misunderstanding of the series comes in when considering the people who aren't fans. The general idea of Saw from those who haven't seen any of them or who have only seen bits and pieces is that the point is blood and look to an extent yes the traps are definitely the set pieces that the films are revolved around okay it is a major focus i won't lie but the idea that these films have nothing going on other than the traps and gross out violence is wildly inaccurate i get why the reputation grew as the series got worse and worse with the gore from film to film but there really is honestly a lot more to all these films in every single one of the saw films the series really brings a lot of interesting dilemmas and challenges for the characters there's a lot of moral questions to be had and you really get involved with these characters and we learn a lot about who they are through flashbacks there's a lot of depth going in there for why characters do what they do the motivations and all that kind of stuff we really we get to know the guy of jigsaw john kramer and everything and though i do think his moral are fucked up and I have a lot of problems with him and that's actually going to be a later chapter in this series that I'm doing. For the most part, like, there's a lot of depth in these films that people don't really acknowledge a lot of the time. I mean, look, like, the timelines bob and weave, they go back and forth and intersect and there is so much more thought put into the writing of these films than they have reputation for. The real emphasis of the series, in my mind, is more the twist than the gore. That's what always hooked me personally. Now, I'll admit, from film to film, some of it gets a little bit soap opera-y, which may be if you haven't seen these films sounds crazy but it's true Saw is basically a soap opera but in a really really violent way <laughs> much like a soap though we as viewers have to be aware of many of the characters histories prior to the events of the film that we're watching we know for instance that john kramer aka jigsaw was diagnosed with cancer and it changed his whole mentality on life and death we know that amanda was his first successful victim and was somewhat rehabilitated at least in their eyes and went on to become an apprentice to him where things ultimately ended up going badly. We know that if a certain character makes a decision now, it will probably affect things down the line and like a relative to them or something will probably be affected and die in some gruesome way. And we won't even know that they're a relative to them until the fucking Hello Zep soundtrack starts playing and we realize that we've been bamboozled once more. Saw is full of rich character development and it can be hard to see from the outside as someone who's not a fan. And so because of that, I do think that the films get uncharacteristically misremembered for being a lot more graphic than they really are. Look, they are graphic, quite graphic in some of them. Some of the scenes, very, very horrible. <laughs> I'm not taking that away from it. These films did try to be brutal and they did achieve it, but there's more stuff going on. Especially if we're talking about the first film, by the way, because again, the first film, the first film is not violent. There are cutaways. It doesn't show much at all. I think most people would be surprised to find that the minimal trap scenes that are actually in the film are shot with this quick whip pan style of editing where we can really barely see anything in terms of blood and gore. And because of that, the emphasis on these scenes end up being the frantic nature of the predicament that these characters are in. Like Amanda in the bear trap in the first film isn't shot to be horrifically violent and, and all that kind of stuff. More so, it's shot to be horrifically 
intense, which is a big difference. And the thing is that that's as bad as the first film gets. That is the most violent scene and it's really not that violent. With the exception of one short shot where she is rummaging through some guts, which sounds worse than it is. Pretty much no other scenes in the first Saw are really that violent. Even the fucking titular scene where Gordon cuts off his foot uh, at the very end, it cuts away. We only see his face, we see the pain that's going on in his face due to the acting. Not so much due to special effects and gore and all that kind of stuff. We see him just cut in a little bit and then the rest of it cuts to his face. And that that's the thing about the first saw. Like, there's the part where Adam is beating up Zep with the, with the toilet thing, um, whatever that thing is called. The heavy toilet thing. Pretty much we are looking at Adam here. We're looking at not the effects that he's doing, not the not the actual collisions, but looking at Adam and the emotion that's going on while he does what he's doing. Pretty much every scene of gore in the first saw goes about going out of its way not to actually show it, but to show the emotion. And I really appreciate that and don't think that the first film gets that credit. When you're looking at the guy who's going through the barbed wire, it's, it's in fast forward for a lot of it. It's flashing, it's very frantic. There's a lot of flash, like white flashes in your face and stuff as they're going through and everything. And you're not really seeing a lot of like detailed cuts and stuff. You're not seeing a lot of that kind of thing. That's not really the focus. That stuff does become a focus a bit more in later films, I'll definitely say. But as for now, in the first Saw, we really don't see that much of that kind of stuff. It's really more of a thriller than it is a horror. And people really forget that. And another thing that makes these scenes not as violent as they possibly could be is that they're shot in flashbacks. They're not actually in the real time. The only thing that takes place in real time in Saw, of course, is the main trap with Adam and Gordon, which is quite a different trap than pretty much anything else that we see in the Saw series. And of course, that is pretty much just about two guys sitting around in a room. So for most of that, it's not violent. <laughs> Funnily, as much as I love the first Saw and I do think it's the best one by far, the main trap of this film is kind of inconsistent with the rest of Jigsaw's MO. But even still, without much of an emphasis on violence, the first Saw gets lumped in with the rest of them as being labeled as torture porn, an arguably problematic term of the series as a whole, but a term that the series itself inspired nonetheless. According to the wiki, Wan did not intend to make a torture porn film, as the script only had one short segment of torture. The film played out like a mystery thriller. It was not until the sequels that the plot focused on more torture scenes. Originally though, the first film held an American NC-17 rating, which surprises me since it really isn't at all that violent, but it later got edited down slightly to earn that R rating, which was a smart move considering how much money it later made, and then went on to continue making even more through DVD and even VHS rentals, only about 10 million more combined. The higher rating would have severed possible profit as each rating cuts off a potential portion of the audience. So say what you will about the rest of this series, it's sick, it's dumb, it took its sequels way too far, whatever. Whether you're right or wrong about any of that, what shouldn't be ignored is the first entry of this series, the first Saw film. It's by far the best and its ending is largely responsible for making the series such a big hit at all. That twist ending, that's what got everybody hooked, not the gore. That that's why Saw 2 was made. That's the thing about these films. They greenlit the sequels as soon as they saw the first Saw success. Um, they, and they saw what they could be potentially holding on to with the licensing and everything of the Saw brand. And that's what I'm saying though, that the draw to Saw, at least originally, was that twist at the end of the first one. That's what got people wanting to see sequels. Saw 2 did get more violent, okay? And like the marketing and everything that's what everything promised from film to film and it did get more violent and that is what people began to expect more and more of with the traps and everything but the main draw the thing that got everybody interested the 103 million dollar uh, box office that it got in the in 2004 that wasn't for violence people weren't watching the first saw forget about the saw brand for a second forget that it's known for being brutal if you've never heard of these things and you go and see the first saw you know, set your mind back to 2004. What you're keen about seeing more of, what you got interested in, was Jigsaw as a villain and that, that twist ending and all that kind of stuff. It's not, you know, you weren't there to see people getting their arms twisted off and whatever the fuck, you know? 
That's what I'm saying. Back in 2004, in a world full of happy endings, Saw kind of changed the game. It started this trend of having a bad guy win in modern films, the villain or anti-hero walking away triumphantly. I'm not saying that it was the first of its kind to do this, but for me personally though, from memory, this was the first movie I'd ever seen where the bad guy wins. In an already extremely cynical film, I expected it all to get resolved by the end. I expected our heroes to succeed. I expected Gordon to reunite with his family. And look, he did escape, so he technically like one. Uh, but however he left with a severely injured leg and that's the last that we saw of him in that film so you know for years up until he features again in Saw 7 we never knew what was going to happen with him. I expected Adam to survive and I expected Detective Tap to take down the infamous Jigsaw but none of these things went down quite as I expected. Perhaps not the first of its kind however Saw introduced me to the idea of a haunting ending. It opened a cinematic world of possibility leaving me with iconic imagery of the guy who wasn't dead that whole time, closing the door on our protagonist to a lengthy death. All while that faint and eerie green filled the screen as Jigsaw uttered those words that sent a shiver down my spine. Game over! Game over! <laughs> Look what, I was like 13 at the time, okay? It affected me. I was like, holy shit. <laughs> uh, it was a big deal. Sword defied the norm of the time when it came to film and blew our collective horror minds back in the day. It's a testament to how well done the world within the film is that it still holds up today. The first sword deserves so much more respect than I think it gets and I feel like it doesn't get that. Even from the hardcore horror buffs themselves. Like, I feel like Saw is looked at as either being too violent from an outside perspective or it's seen as too mainstream from an inside side perspective if that makes sense like it just it kind of can't win i feel like a lot of people think saw is just dumb and whatever and they kind of judge it because of all of those sorts of critics and, and and all the scores and everything or they look at it as being too violent and too horrible for them to watch and it's just ugh, why would i want to see that stuff and I just think that that's a fundamental misunderstanding of what the series was trying to do. I think that really what it was trying to do was make us empathize with the characters that were in traps most of the time, barring some of them. Um, but mainly it made us want to follow like the detectives around and all this stuff, try and figure out the mystery. These films are mysteries. Um, in the forefront that that's the main thing like you can call them horror films as much as you want and sure that's definitely a subgenre that they are you can call them torture porn if you want i guess i don't like that term but sure i'll give it to you i understand why you would say that but for the most part the first thing that they would say the first genre i would say is mystery mystery subgenre horror that's how i would describe saw especially the first one i think for as many of these films that came out and the success that they saw somehow the saw franchise is still deeply underrated and worst of all so harshly misunderstood and that is all for this part i'll be returning in another video very soon um i was hoping to get these all out by the time spiral came out but i think i'm gonna run out of time for that <laughs> um and i'll be splitting up everything i've written out and everything to be different segments in between though will be my review for spiral um and then there will be other parts and everything but the last thing that i will do i think we'll see how it turns out i've kind of planned this badly i ran out of time sorry but um yeah there'll be more parts uh, coming out very soon and then I will end up this series with the I think we'll see what order these come out <laughs> Sorry, um, but yeah, I'll be doing a ranking of all of the Saw films soon as well after I've seen Spiral which comes out soon And I'm so keen to see it. You don't understand like I'm so excited for Spiral um, I'm worried it's not even gonna be what I think it is because it's, I don't know it is it's a Saw sequel But it's not <laughs> So we'll see what I think about that for the next part though uh, Of this video it's gonna be focusing again on the first Saw and it's gonna be talking about how James Wan and Lee Whannell the creators of the first Saw got it made because uh, it's kind of inspiring to me and just interesting so that's what the next part's about look forward to that and stuff and thanks for watching this part also if you're wondering uh, you can't see too much of it because as as my videos always look you can't really see the t-shirts that i'm wearing which is kind of annoying but uh if you look at it here <laughs> you can see it a bit better a little bit it's this cool design um printed by a friend of mine um they have a website called certified printing and yeah they got like custom designs and stuff and they're cool and cartoony and there's pop culture stuff and everything and i like them and also this is like three sizes too big and i love it uh, and there's like a code thing that you can get for 10 percent off from me which is crash 10 
if you go to that website and everything. I'll link it all. I don't really know what I'm doing. This is the first time I've done this kind of thing, so we'll see how that goes. Uh, hopefully that was concise. Goodbye.